celebrating and showcasing some of the most amazing people around the world who are doing incredible things to make our world a better place. This is CU TV News. I'm Jim Masters. Today we celebrate Loretta Harrington, wife of a retired Marine Corps colonel, a former government executive, small business owner, author, and an old soul with a youthful spirit. She's had the good fortune to live in Japan and to travel abroad extensively. Her work with diverse cultures in the United States and overseas has gifted her with life experiences unlike any others that she views with a global lens. Loretta develops deep emotional bonds with her friends and gravitates towards people who share her values. She's also author of the magnificent, riveting, and deeply centered book, Peace of Soul Through the Heart, a heart and soul felt story capturing nuance, humor, and joy, guided by the light and promise of God, ritual, nation, family, and proud heritage that links generations worldwide to the common human experience of hope in the shadow of adversity. We recently had the opportunity to visit with Loretta Harrington at her home in Fairfax, Virginia, to learn more about her wonderful book and her life's journey. I'm Loretta Harrington, author of Peace of Soul Through the Heart. There is no story like my story. I've spent most of my married life living in many different places and abroad. I have seen men go to war, I have sat with Marine wives, and I've attended far too many memorial services. My story is one of a kind. There's no other story like my story. I also worked for George W. Bush for eight years in high-level positions. So I got to know people from many different walks of life. And I met someone from a previous life. My story is authentic and it is told from the heart. And I have discovered that I am an old soul. This is the prologue to the second book that I'm, I'm going to write. And it looks more deeply into soul connections and a life well lived. Looking out the window of my father's bedroom, I see the funeral director's van parked on the street where I spent my young years growing up. The noise downstairs is light, unlike any noise I've heard. The gurney being put into position and the quiet voices of two men from the funeral home. The men told us they wanted the family to remove themselves from the downstairs makeshift bedroom where my father spent his remaining days while they completed their job. I'm in this room with my family waiting for the process of transporting my father's body to the local funeral home. Looking out the window and seeing my father's remains in the body bag on the gurney being put into the van gave me a deep sense of loss and finality. I knew this day would come, but one is never prepared. I wonder if dad thought he lived a life well lived. I ask that same question of myself today. Not only was I with my family that day on March 19, 2009 in the small bedroom in a modest row house outside of Philadelphia, I was in the company of a young man from the country of Georgia, Zora Salabwadze, who was with me that morning when dad passed away at 7.35 a.m. Little did I realize the profound impact Zora would have on me for years to come. That is the day that a life ended and a rebirth begun. My journey continues. Well, remember when we talked Zora one time after dad passed away, and uh, then we're talking about the date, March 19th. Uh, well, here's the thing. My daughter was, was born on the same day, uh, the day when Loretta's uh, father wa uh, passed away, March 19th. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, you decide what it is. But this is it. That's the fact. And uh, Dad died at 7.35 in the morning, and Elena was born at 7.55 that night. Yeah. And when I got the text from Zora, March 19th. Uh, and she was, she, was supposed to bore, she was supposed to be born like three weeks later. Yes. And he said, we're in the hospital. <laughs> and I said, this is March 19th. So Rick and I went over to the hospital immediately, mm -hmm. and we waited all those hours, because you texted at 9 o'clock in the morning. You were there before that, of oh, course. Yes. And I said, oh, my, what if Elena is born today? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and we were watching Nino, and we were thinking, ah, it's up to Nino, it's up to Elena. Well, we, we spent like 24 hours or something. Yes, and then around 7 o'clock, we got action. There was a yes, lot of action. Yes. Oh, my God, that feeling is awesome. The best and we were there. Uh, they, allowed, they allowed family and friends to be in the birthing room. And I'm looking at the clock, and we're moving fast. And so uh, I'm thinking, and okay, this is going to happen. This is definitely going to happen. And then the doctor came in, and she said to Nino, are you ready? She says, I'm ready. I know. I was ready. Yeah, he I was, was crazy ready. Guy. Like, oh, my God, that's the best feeling ever, and, ever. And when uh. Elena was born, it was the first time I've ever seen any anyone born I looked up at the clock and I said it's like amazing time here at the March 19th like just about 12 hours difference and of course we were all excited nobody's thinking about this except me and then it hit us it hit us dad's dad's passing brought you Nino mm -hmm. and Elena and Elena, Elena was born. The and same she day. was born the day Dad passed away. And there are no coincidences. There are no coincidences in this yeah, life. I just believe that everything has a reason. Everything has a reason behind. Yeah, I met Zora nine years ago, March nine years ago. Uh, I was taking care of my dad. Uh, he was uh, uh, he was in hospice care, and the hospice nurse suggested that we get some some assistance. And since I was the caregiver at the time and my sister and brother worked so I was not working I had just left the George W. Bush administration after eight years and totally exhausted from working for a president so I found myself traveling from Virginia to to Pennsylvania several days several weeks actually passed taking care of dad and commuting and uh, they recommended a small private agency to call to get uh, some extra extra hands to help me. I didn't have a job that time, and I was looking to get uh, like any, any money was to earn a legal way, you know? And all of a sudden, this agent called me uh, because I went with my friend there, so yeah. she was looking a job, and she got my number, called me, okay, I got some job for you, and I was so happy that the <laughs> <laughs> first thing I did that I put like a, some, uh, he said, like a, they will hire you anyway, I promise. Just get all your stuff. It's just gonna be like a short job, three weeks. I said, fine, I just need to get something right now. So first time I found out connection between me and Loretta was that when I was not kicked out from the interview, because when I show up with long hair, unshaved, like with it, I had my stuff in a trash bag, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, first time I figured out connection that day, I was not rejected on the interview. When I saw you, Zora, come up the steps, I felt a immediate recognition. I, I kept asking myself rapidly, wait a minute, I know this guy from somewhere. I'm in Virginia. I live in Virginia. I'm now in Pennsylvania. It was certainly not from uh, from any of my circle of friends in Virginia or Pennsylvania because I hadn't lived there for years. But I I sensed that uh, that that chemistry, that connection, where I recognized you, and I don't think you you felt that. Uh, nah. No. No, it was kind of funny for me first time when you told me that. <laughs> it's like, I don't get it, but okay. <laughs> I said, Zora, where's your accent from? And he said, uh, I'm from the country of Georgia. I said, Georgia? My gosh, that's the country that the Russians invaded? It kind of brings me in tears uh, that when I go remember how it felt, the first time when I realized that somebody in this country, somebody from the United States, some Americans were worried about me. It's like uh, uh, I felt I'm not alone. That's like an amazing feeling. It's still hard for me to describe what kind of feeling is that, how big or how amazing, but it was huge. So that was the first serious thing when I realized that, wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's big, you know? We kept saying to each other, why is this happening? And I would say, 
Zora, it's just God's will. It's all meant to be. And for me, it was feeling confident that I could trust Zora. That was, that was the most important thing for me. When I left my dad, I could trust Zora would do everything that needed to be done. Yeah, thank you. That's the most important part. When you deserve a trust, I think this is the above every title, money and everything. That trust is like a, something you, you cannot buy or you cannot, you must deserve that. And, and because and, of I deserve it, I that's deserved it, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's all part of this uh, soul connection discussion in the book. Uh, how we're connected and stayed connected and how we... Uh, we will never, we will, we will have our arguments, but uh, oh, we, we fight, a we lot. fight oh, yeah. and, and the connection is, is strengthened by that. Um, I would never, ever turn my back on Zora, never. Because once I made the decision to accept Zora as part of my family, it's family. But the soul connection was something that uh, Zora struggled with. I knew it uh, because I had been tuned into these kinds of connections in the past. And I wanted to write the book about that and why people come in your life. And that meeting that day has changed both of us. Well, obviously, the uh, thing is that I never believed in this soul connection. That's how I looked at that way. I mean, I heard it a couple times and I said, ah, that's... The whole soulmate yeah, discussion. It's like, ah, uh, it's like... A, you... thing is that uh, last maybe six years, uh, I started thinking about life seriously and uh, how much it means that even you see person once in your life, even this one meeting can change your future, can change your understanding, can change your vision. And nobody comes without reason in your life. That is mm -hmm. absolute truth. Everybody and everything has a reason. So I don't know. It's like a thing that there's something more than we think there is. And uh, obviously, uh, you coming in my life, I'm coming in your life. We families became like a one family. That's uh, that happened with. Uh, a lot of things matched, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was interesting. And obviously, my life changed. I mean, who knows where I would be today? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. We don't know because you you had to work wherever you could find a. a... No, it's not about the job. It's about uh, yeah, of course, you follow where you get the job. You might even change mm -hmm. the state and cities and everything. But thing is that what kind of people are around you? Because obviously, we need discuss the things we need to listen we need to ask advice so it's obviously it means who is there next to you and who you trust so that means a lot any um, nationality when you know they hear that somebody has written a book about them um, how the important thing is how my country and how Georgians were perceived and uh, what Loretta showed, she depicted all the true moments, all, all the, like for instance, after opening up to the West, what Georgians anticipate, for instance, from the Americans. How, and she saw it so correctly. This is my friend Nana. She's part of our book club here at Crestmont. And Nana's been a longtime friend of mine, and she found time today to come over and talk about my book. Um, I can always rely on Nana for an honest opinion of all the books that we read in our book club. And I want to thank you, Nana, for coming and sharing your thoughts today with, with me. You know, we've talked about my book, but we never really talked about my book. So, um, I, you are so welcome. And um, yeah, you're right. We talked about the book, but we did not talk about the book in depth. Um, and I'm so happy to have this opportunity to talk about it uh, today because it is, um, it's a very interesting book really to talk about. First of all, because I know the characters in the book and that makes a difference. And this is the first time I'm reading a book that I know the people. Um, 
and it is also because it is about Georgia. And usually when I hear that somebody has written a book, a foreigner, a book about Georgia, I usually get this um, jealous anticipation and kind of trepidation, what will they write about Georgia? How will they understand Georgia? Will they see what they should or did they pick up on things Georgian? So this was the thing that I was, you know, when I opened the book, I thought, okay, let me see what it is about. And then I was fascinated by the structure of the book, Loretta, mm -hmm. because the way you have structured it, it makes it so interesting and easy because it somehow consists of three parts. I don't know whether by your design or it came out this way, but what I liked is that the first part is about your family, your dad. Um, then it is Zura's introduction and everything related to Zura here, and then your travel to Georgia. Mm -hmm. And these are three themes that also follows from the structure. It is family values, it is friendship, and it is um, discovering unknown. Well, you, you talk about it being personal, and that was the intent of the story. I wanted it to be authentic, and mm -hmm. it is, and it's personal, and I wanted the reader to understand that. It, took, um, it takes a lot to write a, a story like this because it, it is emotional, it and, is. and I didn't want to be overbearing when I wrote the book. But I also wanted to set the stage, Nana, for why things happen in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was just too coincidental. And I don't believe in coincidences, like how we met at, at the, right. how we the, met the, at the, the street the festival. <laughs> and I heard your accent, and you heard me talking about Georgia. And I turned around and, oh, hi, how are you? We, we introduced <laughs> each other, and that was years ago. And, uh, it was instant, instant connection. And I think that's part of it, that we have these connections with people and sometimes we just put it off to the side and say, nice meeting you, and we move on about our daily business. Then on the other hand, we say to ourselves, gee, I should have maybe spoke or talked a little bit more. And I was really glad that we talked more on the, at the street festival that, that right. day. It ends with Zura having life in America. Yeah. And um, I think this calls for uh, yet another book, <laughs> <laughs> a sequel. <laughs> and a sequel. It was not goodbye and thank you for your service. It was, wait a second, you were with me at the last minutes of my dad's life. You stay with me and you stay in life with me. Mm -hmm. And not only that, when you learned that he was from Georgia, you wanted to learn more about Georgia, learn yeah. the language. Mm -hmm. And so this was, this was also you and Rick, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is something that I was thinking about when I was reading and I was thinking, that's Loretta, that's <laughs> Loretta all along. <laughs> yeah, that's her. I've been asked, what did you leave out? Uh, and I didn't leave anything out. Hmm. I wouldn't have changed anything. I was very satisfied with the book. And uh, once it was published, Nana, I never read it again. Like I said, it's the first time I was reading a book where I knew Loretta, she's my <laughs> friend, I knew Zura, and you know, Rick, everybody. So this, um, this was really a special book. And I am very grateful that I had this opportunity to read it, and I am grateful that I had the opportunity to talk about it today. Oh, Nana, I couldn't ask for a better friend and a better book reviewer. She's one of our best book reviewers. <laughs> and we didn't talk about the book, did we? Till just today. Yeah, we really didn't. True. Well, thank you, Nana. I really, really appreciate your kindness and uh, and uh, I'll see you at book club next yes. week. <laughs> yeah. To learn more about Loretta Harrington and to order her incredible book, Peace of Soul Through the Heart, visit her website, 
LorettaHarrington.me. For CU TV News, I'm Jim Masters. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.